I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty nervous about this. This is the only fender I have, so I really need to not screw this up. If you were a cop and you saw this thing driving down the road, would you pull it over? The goal of this video is to make this thing look a little less like a death trap and a little more like a actual car again. Hello builders and makers, welcome back to Build Theory where I show you my build process in order to encourage and enable your own projects. In the last video, I got this thing running and driving. I took it up and down the street, which was incredibly exciting. My 12 valve Cummins swapped Ford Explorer, it drives, I can take it up and down the street. The only issue is, is that it's not quite street legal. And that's gonna be the goal of this video. Let's make it so this thing is street legal, or at least as street legal as it's gonna be. In order to make that happen, I need to put headlights on it. I need to put a front end on it. I would like to put fenders on it. I need to do everything to make this look like a car again, and at least have the bare minimum for what you need to drive it down the street. And then once that's done, I can take it on its first real test drive. I can go get it up to speed. I can test out the gears that are in it. I can actually put my foot down and see how this giant 1200 pound engine feels in this tiny little Explorer. I'm really excited to make that happen, but first I wanna make sure that if I drive past a cop, he's not immediately gonna pull me over. So let's get to work. The first thing I wanna do is get this sheet metal to fit back on the front of this car. This was on the stock Explorer and it's what mounted the headlights and the grill and all of those types of pieces. I think if I can get this back on the car, it'll give me a place to mount all the front body stuff and it'll make everything a lot easier. As you can see, the headlights mount straight to this and then a grill goes in between. This has this top piece, which has all my routing diagrams and all that crap on it, plus the hood latch. And so does the part I pulled off the ram. I'd prefer to stay with this stuff since it actually has the proper belt routing diagrams and all that stuff. So I need to remove that from the other sheet metal. And then finally, there's quite a big gap between where this hooked up stock and where it is now. I wanna cut everything out of the back of this to move it as close to the radiator as I can get it. And then I need some sheet metal to fill that gap. And then at that point, there's still gonna be a gap in the fender here. So I'm gonna to have to cut this and move it forward. The gap won't be that bad because hopefully I'll be able to move that sheet metal this way a bit. But I will need to extend these fenders. My biggest barrier to doing all this is that I really don't have much experience with sheet metal and I basically have no experience doing body work. So this is certainly gonna be a learning experience for me. I'm gonna take you along for the ride and see if I can't learn anything that might be helpful to you. And hopefully by the end of this, I can have a fender that looks somewhat passable and it doesn't look like it's the first time I've ever done any body work. I guess we'll see. I hope this comes across in my videos, but I really like learning new skills. Anytime I run into a situation working on a project car where I don't know how to do something, I see that as an opportunity to pick up a new skill. I don't ever wanna let not knowing how to do something get in the way of getting something done. It might take a lot more time to learn a new skill every time a new unknown comes up, but in the end, new skills are the most valuable thing that you can gain. Cars can get wrecked, money can disappear, but knowledge stays with you. So let's learn a new skill. The Explorer has a face again. The Explorer has a face again, which is pretty exciting. The next step is to connect the face to the rest of the body. So let's get working on the fenders. Now that I've got this stiffened up, I can move on to starting to cut these fenders. My plan is to cut this right here, move this forward onto the headlight, and then add sheet metal in between in order to make it a fender again. I am also gonna need to cut this right here so that my tire can actually steer without running into the fender. These big 37s, they need some trimming to make them work. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty nervous about this. 
This is the only fender I have, so I really need to not screw this up. Well, I cut it. And now this is the gap that I need to fill with sheet metal. It's basically 11 inches. I feel the need to clarify something here. When I talk about needing to fill an 11 inch gap, that might sound kind of concerning. It's not that the entire engine is sitting 11 inches further than it did stock. That's part of it, but that's not the whole story. When I built this thing, I put the engine as far back as I could get it to go. In fact, I even cut the cowl a little bit in order to force it even further back in here. The biggest factor contributing to that large 11 inch number is that I now have a very thick radiator in here and I have an even thicker intercooler in here. For me, I thought it was worth giving up a little bit of approach angle and having to do a little more work in order to guarantee that this thing would always get enough cooling and that it would make more power with the intercooler. Every decision you make is always a trade-off when building a project car and I hope it makes sense why I thought this trade-off was worth it. All right, I think I got this close enough that I can start tacking and bending. Let's get onto the welding part. The only issue is that I only have a TIG gun. Typically, somebody who is going to be welding bodywork like this, they would be using a MIG gun, not a TIG gun. TIG should work all right. We'll see how this goes. A quick note on this, and I'm sure you know this if you've tried to do body work before, but this is taking forever. As a point of reference, every time you see an outfit change in these videos, you know it's been at least a full day's labor. So while this is turning out all right, I still got a lot of work left to do. After a couple days of welding and grinding, this is where I'm at. This would have been much easier if I had had a MIG welder. It was definitely harder with TIG, but you gotta work with what you got. One issue I had is that where I had welded this, of course, had warped a little. In order to get the warp out, I just beat it with a hammer. But in order for it to actually go straight, I needed to put something straight behind it to back it. I just used a piece of quarter inch plate I had laying around. Something thicker would have worked a lot better, but in order to straighten out sheet metal, a hammer and a block on the back that's straight actually wasn't as hard as I thought it was gonna be. This is all still somewhat wrinkled and everything. I'm not gonna go straight to slapping paint on this. I'm actually gonna hit it with a bunch of Bondo and then paint over it. So let's fix some of this nastiness and see if some Bondo can help us out. I used this entire can on that fender already. And as you can see, it's not very white yet. This can is supposed to match the Ford color, which is why I used it, but it was $15 and the primer just soaked it right up. Hardly any of the white even stayed. I'm not about to spend $100 on paint between the two fenders, so I just got some of this. I think it's way better to just spray it out of a paint gun anyways, and this is way cheaper. Color's not gonna match, but the paint will be nicer, and at least I won't have to buy 15 cans of it. Let's give this a try. Hopefully the match is close enough. Has my beard gotten longer since the start of this video? I'm having problems here, YouTube. Let's talk about it. I have sanded down and rebondoed this piece three or four times. And I finally got to the point where I thought, ah, it's looking okay. The imperfections aren't that bad. I'm just gonna shoot it in white. And the imperfections were pretty bad. There are spots like this that I will smooth out with Bondo and then I'll come back and sand it down. And the Bondo I put in just comes right back up when I sand it. I don't know if I'm just not waiting long enough every time I Bondo it, or I don't know if there's paint left in these indents that's preventing the Bondo from sticking. But whatever's happening, the Bondo isn't sticking in a lot of these spots. I'm gonna sand this whole Bondo section down one more time, but this time I'm gonna take a wire wheel and really 
chunk out all these areas so I can make sure that there is no paint stuck in these little divots. And I'll give this one last attempt to see if I can get it smooth. Have I ever mentioned that I hate bodywork? Cause I hate bodywork. Maybe it's cause I'm not very good at it. Maybe it's because this is just an off-roader and I like the idea of putting three weeks into some fenders that I'm just gonna bang up off-road anyways, but not a fan. But let's keep going, see how I can make this turn out. I sanded it all down and I finally got this smooth. This is probably my third or fourth time throwing Bondo on it, sanding it off, throwing Bondo on it, sanding it off. And this time it finally worked. There are a couple spots on this panel that still have some pinholes in it. I'm not sure if that's just because those spots, the Bondo didn't stick or what, but if you have any advice on how to use Bondo and how to make it actually stick and come out smooth, leave it in the comments. This took a lot of trial and error in order to get right. And I'm sure some other people could benefit from some help here. This is my first time doing it. I think it turned out all right. Let's throw some paint on it and then we'll really know. Now that did not turn out too bad. I asked you at the start of the video, if you saw this driving down the street and you were a cop, would you pull it over? Hopefully I'm getting a little closer to passing the glance test at least. The color doesn't match perfect. However, if I'm being honest, I always wanted to wrap this thing anyways. So that'll be taken care of at a future date. I still have another fender to build. That'll be done off camera. For now, I'm thinking this thing is passable. I think it's time I get it on the road and do a real road test. I need to get it up to speed, make sure I like the gears, make sure nothing rattles off of it. That's gonna be the next video. Subscribe and stick around if you wanna see that. Otherwise, thank you for watching. Now, go out there and build something.